Hi everybody and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we are working on a 2008 Kia Seed and this car came from another workshop and they wrote us a mail. Dear Dan, this is a 2008 Kia Seed with an airbag mail function. It has got a fault code for the left front crash sensor. We already replaced the crash sensor with an original Kia part, a new Kia part, and we also changed the left side with the right side sensor, but we still have got a fault code for the left front crash sensor. Can you have a look? Well, of course I can have a look. We're all gonna have a look, so let's see if we can diagnose this one together. Now I actually think it's the first time we're diagnosing an airbag system on this channel, so hopefully it's something interesting. Now, as always, let's start out by confirming the customer complaint. So let's see if the airbag light stays on. And after that, we're gonna scan the car for fault codes and we'll see if indeed we've got a fault code for the left front crash sensor. So we're inside the car, let's see if the airbag light stays on. So this is the airbag light right here and Let's give it some time. It goes off and it comes back on. So that's customer complaint confirmed. We have got an airbag malfunction. So the next step is to scan the system for fault codes. So I hooked up the dongle to the vehicle and as you can see, the vehicle is communicating. So that's a good thing. I turned on the ignition and I scanned the entire vehicle for fault codes. I also hooked up a battery maintainer because we only had about 11.8 volts and this way we don't have to worry about the battery voltage during our diagnostic process. Now indeed there is a fault code st uh, stored in the airbag system and as you can see it's the B1329, the FIS, that's the front impact sensor or front crash sensor, driver side, that's the left side over here, communication error and the fault code is present. So right now we confirmed we've got an airbag fault because we saw the airbag light staying on and we confirmed we have got exactly the same fault code the other workshop was talking about, the left front crash sensor or the left front um, impact sensor is what Kia calls it. Now the next step, we need to find out where this sensor is located because to be honest, I have no idea. I took a look at service data and I found out that the crash sensor is located behind the front bumper right next to the headlamp. Now, we can actually not physically see the sensor because it's in between the bumper and a panel here at the back. Now we can definitely see somebody has been in here before because there are some fasteners for this trim missing and there's actually a nut right there for the left front headlight missing. Now, when we take a look at the other side, we can actually see that the nut, come on, is right there. So it is present on the right hand side. But anyway, uh, to diagnose this vehicle and to do some measurement and to get access to the sensors, in the next step, we actually need to remove the front bumper. I removed the front bumper and it was actually very easy to get the front bumper off. Just a few screws at the top and the bottom holding it down and it's even easier when a few of them are missing. Now the first thing I noticed when I removed the front bumper is look at the state of that condenser. Yes, that's the condenser and also take a look at the dry rot on those tires. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up. But anyway, that's not what the customer is here for. They are here to get their airbag system diagnosed. Now, these are the front crash sensors. The left one and the right one. And the first thing I'm going to do, by the way, one of those two is new, but they swapped them around. So they both seem to be um, original parts. It says Hyundai Kia on there and it says Hyundai Kia over there, uh, FIS, so that's front impact sensor. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the battery because these sensors register whether the car is in a crash, so I don't want to fiddle around and shake them around and make the airbag go off. That would probably result in a million view video, but a very unsatisfied customer. 
Now I disconnected the battery terminals and I actually touched those terminals together. Here's the other one with this spanner to discharge the capacitors. So now we can safely work on these sensors. Now, since we have got two identical sensors, one on the left and one on the right, and since it's so easy, and I know the other workshop did this before, but before we dive really deep into this fault, I quickly want to swap them around and see if the fault code moves from the left side to the right side, just to be sure. Now, normally I'm not a big fan of swapping parts around, but in this case, it's so tempting, it's so easy, that we just have to do it. Now, the same with when you're chasing a misfire and the coils are very easy to swap around. If that's the most efficient thing you can do right then, go for it, nothing wrong with it. Now, the right sensor has got the sticker hanging loose, so I'm gonna place the right sensor at the left side and the left sensor at the right side. And by the way, you saw me using an impact gun to remove the bolts, but I'm not gonna use the impact gun to tighten them again because these sensors are quite sensitive. Now, when they're installed, we're gonna bring out the scan tool and we're gonna find out if the fault code moved from the left side to the right side. Now, probably not, but I don't wanna regret um, doing that when we're two hours into this diagnosis and it turned out we got a faulty sensor. So I reconnected the battery and scanned the airbag system for fault codes again. And as we already kind of expected, we still have got a fault code stored for the left front impact sensor. Now, no big deal, but now it's time to take a closer look at that impact sensor. Now let's take a closer look at that left front impact sensor. Now I'm not gonna swap them around again uh, because the new one is now probably at the right side because the problem is not in the sensor anyway. Now, when we take a closer look, we can see there are two wires going to that impact sensor. There is a green and a blue wire. Now, when we follow that harness, it goes down and then left, and here it goes up to the horn. That's the horn right there. And when we follow it further, it goes to two temperature sensors. And when we follow it even further, it goes to the right front impact sensor. Now, when we follow that wiring all the way back, so back that way, we come to a connector. And when we take a closer look at that connector right here, we can see that green and blue wire coming from that left front impact sensor. Now, what I did is I disconnected the connector for the front left impact sensor. By the way, I inspected that connector and it looks perfectly fine. No corrosion, no bent pins, no nothing. And the same goes for the main connector over here. It looks perfectly fine. Now, I hooked up a breakout lead to the green wire in this connector and I hooked up my meter and I set my meter to continuity. Now, I'm gonna hook up the other end of the meter to the other end of the green wire in this connector right here and when there is continuity, my meter should beep. So let's hook it up and it's the wire in the corner right here. So the meter should beep right now. And it doesn't. So let's check the meter real quick. And as you can hear, the meter works. So let's check the blue wire. Let's switch to the other pin. And the blue wire is the second one from the corner. So that's this one. And as you can hear, that one beeps. So right now it looks like we've got a break in the green wire somewhere from this connector to the main connector right here. Now what I did is I reconnected my meter to the green wire uh, on this side and on that side. And what I wanna do next is I wanna wiggle that harness and maybe we can get those two wires to touch again and find out where the brake is located. So let's do that. Let's wiggle the connector. I mean, I think the wire only goes from this side to this side. So it's only a short piece of wire. So maybe we can get it to beep again. And it looks like we can't, so Let's figure out another way to find this break in this wire. 
Now, what I want to do next, just for fun, is to see if we can find this wire break using this very cheap cable tracker. Now, this is one of the cheapest units out there. It's probably available for somewhere around 20, 30 euros. Not a sponsor, just something we got laying around at our shop here. Now, there are probably a lot better units out there, uh, more expensive ones, but this is what I've got right now. What this tool does is this little unit emits a tone when we put it on and you can see the red LED flashing. It emits a tone on this red wire and this unit is able to receive that tone. So when we push the button, it gives an audible tone and when we move away from the wire, the tone will fade away. So when there is a wire break, the tone will fade away and it will give us a general area of where the wire break is. Now it isn't perfect, but it prevents us from peeling open the entire wiring loom. Now I really hope the microphone is gonna pick this up, but I hooked up the tone generator to that green wire and this is what that sounds like. Now let's try it over here and exactly the same sound. Now let's try it over here and the sound sounds a lot dimmer. Now, listen really careful to the difference. The tone is a lot louder over here. Now let's try to pinpoint it. And it looks like the wire break is at this cross point right here. Now we're probably still gonna pick up the tone over here, even though the wires are not connected, but that's because the other wires act as an antenna and even the body of the car. So not a perfect tool, but you have to listen for the volume of the sound. So again, the difference in volume, and this way you can pinpoint the general area of the wire break. Now, just to be accurate, let's try one more time. And this is where the tone is strongest. And when we move left, the tone fades away. And when we move right, the tone also fades away. And it's strongest in this general area. So I really believe that the wire break is somewhere around this area right here. So it definitely looks our wire break is somewhere in this area. Well, not that way probably, but somewhere around here. So in the next step, we need to open up that wiring harness to see if we can find that open wire. Now, I was just opening up the wiring loom and we were spot on. Right where we thought it would be, I found this green wire with green crusties. Now, let's pull on it. And that's definitely our problem. Now, I actually had to pull a little bit harder on the wire than I thought I would have to, but you can see how that wire is totally corroded. So I think it's got very tough insulation. Now, you can see how a wire tracker can be very convenient. Now, it wouldn't have been a disaster trying to find this wire break on this short piece of wire without one, but imagine trying to find a wire break on a wire that runs along the entire length of the car. That would be very time consuming. So it can be a very handy tool as long as you know its limitations. Now I cut out the bad piece of wire and we're gonna solder in this new piece of green wire. Now it's not exactly the same color green, but I don't think the airbag is going to care. There we go. Now let's do the same on the other side and we should have a fix. And this is what the final result looks like. Now I hooked up the main connector again as well as the connector that goes to the sensor. We still need to connect the battery again. I cut out the bad piece of wire and soldered in 
a new piece of wire used heat shrinks. I inspected as many as the other wires as I could see, covered it all up, and hopefully we've got a fix. Now I quickly erased the fault codes out of the airbag control unit and I rescanned the vehicle and as you can see, no more fault codes in the airbag system. There is still a fault code in the AC system, but that's not what the car is here for. Now the next step, let's go inside the car and see if that airbag light finally goes off. Now let's start up the car. Now remember that the last time the airbag light came on, went off and came back on again. But it looks like this time it went off and this time it stays off. Now there was a good old case of the green crusties. Now this car didn't need any new parts. It just needed a little bit of love. Now I'm gonna inform the other workshop about the state of the condenser, the tires, and I'm gonna inform them there's still a fault code in the AC system, and maybe they allow us to take a look at that as well. Now I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, and when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I upload a new video. And remember, diagnose then, fix it again. See you next time, guys. From this trim, now, if we look a lot, if we look a look, <laughs> touch the two terminals together to ditch, to this, di, di. I touch them together with a spanner to ditch, to ditch, di, dis, dis, discharge. Started up the scan tool again and sca, 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 scant, scant. <laughs> the other side of the meter to the green wire over here and when there is screen continue, now, just for fun, what I want to do next is see if we can find a way of... Oh.